Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and I am so happy to be joined right now by someone I've been trying to get on the channel for so long now. You guys have seen him all over the leaderboard. He's currently second in the world, but he's been first many, many times. It is none other than Octa, aka OKTAY, aka Botcham Fan, who is the pusher on the account. Botcham, how you doing, man? Yeah, fine, and you? I am doing fantastic. Just wanted to thank you so much for coming on, and, and I wanted to thank Octa as well for uh, for putting me in touch with you. Uh, so it's an interesting history because Octa actually played the account in the beginning of the game for quite a while, and he was known as one of the best beatdown players in the game. And then you took over on the account, and you have been playing exclusively beatdown, and now you're known as one of the best beatdown players. So almost without missing a beat, you kind of slid right in there. So uh, tell us a little bit first about how you got noticed in the game and how you initially got contracted to be the pusher on the Octa account. Yeah, so basically I've been playing challenges on my personal account, and um, it took a while, and then I hit about 200 card, AK cards, and yeah, I've been leveling Lavaloon, which is my go-to deck, and yeah. I had then I had um, level four Lavaloon, and I was able to push uh, top 200 mid-season, um, although my King Tower was like level 12, and that's like three or four months ago, and then I contacted. Um, Octa via line and he said okay I'll nod you down and like a week later he contacted me contacted me again and he said okay do you still mind to push a max account and I said of course and, yeah. <laughs> and then the rest and, is history yeah and you've done that very was... very well you've gotten uh correct me if I'm wrong here so last season you got 17th at the end of the season correct yeah and the season before that you pushed on two accounts the Nova Octa in the Anthony account and got fifth in seventh, right? Um, no, that was the season before. The season before. The... Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, and in the season before last season, I pushed um, on another account. Um, it was, I think it was called FFF or something like that. And okay. there I finished 16. And um, on Octa, I tilted a bit and finished 64. Um, and then, yeah, three seasons ago, I, um, I finished fifth and seventh. Um, on Nova Octa and another account. Awesome. Well, we're going to get into a lot of beatdown strategy. We're going to be covering the two big beatdown decks, the Lava Loon and the Golem, uh, the Golem beatdown, the best Golem beatdown deck in the game right now. So before we get into all the nitty gritty, because I really want to learn some of your magic, Octa or Botchum, because I, I'm not that good at beatdown, and I almost feel embarrassed to say that because... Everybody kind of makes fun of Beatdown and says it's not a big strategy deck. Like, well, how do you feel about that? Yeah, especially at the moment. Um, so I'm playing Lava Loon on ladder, and especially at the moment, it's pretty hard because ever since Nightwitch got released, um, yeah, that's just the hardest counter to imagine because, for example, if you play against Golem, the Golem and Nightwitch, they walk up and and punish you and the bats they they um, stay in the back and yeah that's just a pretty bad situation um yeah so um especially level loon has been called like a no skill deck and mm -hmm. um, i can see that because there are other decks like for example hawk cycle where the skill gap is just bigger but mm -hmm. um if you scroll scroll to the through the leaderboards you will see that especially at the moment not many people are playing Lava Loon, so it's pretty easy to say that also Lava Loon requires some skill. Absolutely, and I've always said, you know, I've said this, but my subscribers are probably sick of me saying it, but I've always thought that the that the big, big heavy beatdown decks, just because you're making less decisions in the course of a match, because it's a more expensive deck usually, doesn't necessarily mean that it's any less skill required, it just means there's more kind of gravity weighed on each and every ind individual decision that you make throughout the match, you know? Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I didn't think that way. <laughs> you disagree? <laughs> no. No. That's the point as well. But I. Yep. I didn't have that idea yet. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. So tell us a little bit. I mean, you mentioned the Night Witch. So let's just start with her. How do you deal with the Night Witch? Let's start out with the Lava Loon because that's what we're watching right now. How do you deal with Night Witch with with your Lava Loon deck? Um. So basically, first of all, Night Witch is a very hard counter. Um. I lose many games against Nightwitch, and 
yeah so but how i deal with it um first of all i i tell them about night witch beatdown um if they if they play golem you have got to yeah focus on splitting lanes so if they play the golem on the right side you want to go left lane because otherwise it will be like your lava hound flies into the golem and the night witch and the night witch and the golem they cross a river and you have to defend the night witch and mm -hmm. the bats um the bats spawned by the night witch they just stay in the back and kill your lava hound and then you have to deal with the bats as well so you have you have to focus on splitting lanes otherwise you're completely screwed okay so whenever you see and, that golem dropped against the golem night witch deck you're gonna hit the other lane hard yeah and also um, a pretty good counter in my deck um against night witch is minions so that's like the best way to deal with it but yeah there are things like baby dragon or maybe a fireball and then you screw the spell yeah 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 it's, it's difficult it's difficult uh so talk a little bit about let's besides the night witch how do you do we're gonna watch a three musketeer and kind of go through it play by play in a second here but one thing i wanted to ask you is as a Lava Loon player, we just saw on this replay here that I'm watching against uh, D, D Black Rose, but I saw that sometimes you almost fake that you're going to push one lane hard, and then you send the balloon in the opposite lane. Is that something that you do often? You're doing it again right um, now. Um, yeah, sometimes I do that because, like, um, if they overcommit on defending the Lava Hound, then they won't have any defense um on on the loon and yeah so maybe they have to play like fireball zap and that's already a positive trade or mm -hmm. sometimes they just don't have any chances at all when how do you decide when to do that and when not to do it it just it just depend on what they already have dropped early defending um yeah pretty good example is if you face a uh, three musketeer heal spell we'll see that i think i did it in the replay as well mm -hmm. not sure though um if they do like a battle ram minion hot push in single elixir and you defend that and then they pump you know like they don't have minion horde on cycle and if they pump they they won't have elixir for three musketeers and then you can just drop a loon mm -hmm. and yeah a naked loon and and with the splitting lanes it's just you have to know the counters and if they played all the air counters you can do that okay so that's that makes more sense so basically what you're doing is you're seeing if they use their best air counters or if they have them out of cycle or out of rotation for your on your lava hound lane and if they do if, if you know that they're kind of screwed then you'll hit the other lane with a balloon yeah, solo. yeah okay and i think the, the deck again uh, which i do that um, the most again is um the hawk cycle deck with executioner because mm -hmm. if they they have to play you play lava hound in the back and then of course they play execution on the same lane yep and then yep. you then you can they can go ahead and drop either Mega Minion or Minions so that um, on the Executioner so that they have to tornado that. And then you split uh, split lanes with the Balloon and he has to Lightning that. And then you can uh, kill the Executioner with e either Mega Minion or Minions um, which you have left. And yeah, that's such a positive Elixir trade and also you, you will get a lot of damage and yeah. Yeah, that's a very, it's a very good idea. Uh, I with all the bridge spam going around, why do you prefer Goblin Gang still to guards or something in this deck? Um, yeah, because, for example, against Lockbait, Goblin Gang is my uh, my best counter against um, uh, uh, Goblin Barrel, because mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to play arrows on that. Mm -hmm. then, then, uh, then they kind of outcycle me. Um, and also, I don't think that guards provide enough damage. And yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go through this last replay here, and then I want to play a match myself because I suck with Lava Loon, and then you can tell me all the things I do wrong, and then we'll move into the Golem deck. Sound good? Okay. All right, so I'm going to press watch, and I'm going to press play at the beginning. Let me know when you're with me. Yeah, um, I'm like at three minutes now. Okay. The Musketeer one. Yep, I'm going to pause. I'm going to press play in three, two, one, go. Okay. Okay, so this is an interesting starting hand here. How do you feel about it? Um, okay, so like with this starting hand, and I also know that he plays three musketeers. Okay. Um, um, I would just wait because there's nothing that you can do at all. Yeah. If you had lava so, hound in this starting hand, would you use it or would you not use it? No, I wouldn't use it because then 
that could uh, place the musketeers and in one lane and guard them with a battle ram and that would be pretty bad. What if what if you didn't know he was playing three musketeers? Do you start out with, are you the type of lava loon player that starts out with lava hound as your first play or you're not going to do that at all? Um, no, you don't have to be that careful with with lava hound, but I wouldn't start out with it because, for example, if you face bridge spam, you're already screwed. Uh huh. Okay. So you want them to make a play before you before you make yours? Yeah. Okay, or, or before, I'm so, uh, sorry, before you drop your, like, if they drop a knight in the back, would then, you then? then I, yeah, sometimes, that's, then you can drop a lava hound, but basically it's not, it's not bad to wait um, until double legs of time, because it's a 4.1 deck, and yeah, of course it gets better in double legs, yeah? Yeah, yeah, for sure, so waiting out your opponent is always a good thing, like, if you could wait out the entire single elixir time, it's a win for you, right? Yeah, Okay, course. so... Let's go over a couple pretend scenarios because I actually find these most beneficial for myself. And it doesn't have to be the first play of the game. It can be the middle play of the game, but let's just for all intents and purposes say it's the first play in the game so we know that you're even an elixir. If the opponent dropped, say, a... Uh, if they dropped a golem in the back, which is never a good idea, but if they dropped a golem in the back for the first play, what would you? how would you respond? Um, yeah, just as I said, I would probably, if I have Lava Hound, I would split lanes. Um, so I would go the opposite lane with Lava Hound in the back. Um, and if I have Tombstone and no Lava Hound, I would play Tombstone. And okay. if I have neither of those, that's pretty bad. What if you had what if you had what you have in your hand right now? So like, or before that, Lightning. So if you have like Balloon, Arrows, Goblin Gang, and uh, Lightning. Yeah, then you have to cycle cards. Cause you wouldn't play you Balloon the at the bridge though? Like no, no. Opposite lane? No? no. no? Okay. Because if they if they have Mega Minion, then it's such a positive trait, and also there's the Golem coming down. Yeah, that's of, of course that's bad. That's really smart. Because honestly, I think that's a mistake that I would make. I would see the Golem. I knew I would know they only have two Elixir, or you know, obviously they're they're also gaining Elixir. But I think I would be like, okay, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go the other lane. You know, you're so used to doing that and like Hog Cycle decks and stuff like that that I think that it's a common mistake. Maybe other people like me. We're just so taught and used to pushing the other lane, but it's probably not a good idea when you're you know you're setting yourself up with a five elixir balloon to possibly lose. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, of course we were gonna go through that replay, and I just ended up talking about that, <laughs> that starting hand the entire time. For three musketeers, we saw it here in the replay. You guys hopefully were paying attention in the background, but for three musketeers. Are you lightning? Are you lightning? Lightning? Are you lightning the pump <laughs> or are you using lightning for the three musketeers? And how do you decide which one you're going to use it on? Um, yeah, I'm lightning the pump um, pretty much every time because mm -hmm. if they build up a, an elixir lead, then they can outcycle you with the battle ram, and that's um, already pretty bad. And also, I only use lightning on three musketeers if I know they don't have battle ram in rotation and or not enough. Not enough elixir, because if they protect their three musketeers with the battle ram, you lose the game immediately. Okay. And what about the? How do you def? What is the best, op most optimal way to defend against split three musketeers without using lightning with this deck? Okay, so um, there it depends on your hand. But let's mm -hmm. say that you have tombstone in the hand and lava hound. Mm -hmm. Then um, I most often play the tombstone on the side. Um, where the one musketeer um, comes, yeah, and okay. then I play Lava Hound on the other side. So one, when the uh, two musketeers cross the bridge, they uh, hit the Lava Hound and not my tower. And um, most often they play Battle Ram in front of the two musketeers because I played my Tombstone on the left side. Okay. And then I then I can play, for example, minions up, uh, behind my lava, lava Hound, and um, the Lava Hound tanks the musketeers. Okay, so you're using your Lava Hound as a tank, essentially. Yeah, yeah, okay. and also, also if I don't have Lightning in the rotation and they play all three Musketeers in the same lane, then I'll go just I'll just go with the Lava Hound in the back and hope that they cross my river um, before, yeah, and yeah. that they cross my river and then I can tank with the Lava Hound and kill them. Okay, uh, well I'm gonna go ahead and hop into a match here. Are you ready to spectate me? Yeah, in just a moment. Okay. Okay, I'm ready now. All right, we are hopping in. All right, so I'm going against somebody in the Royal Sin Queso. He's a level 12, so hopefully I don't make a complete 
fool of myself. So I have the Lava Hound in my opening hand here. I'm going to play it. You think that's a good move? Um, yeah, if he has pump, it's okay, yeah. Okay. So now what should I be doing um, here? Yep. Um, did you have lighting in the starting hand? Yeah, but I play. I dropped the Lava Hound right as you dropped the pump. Okay, okay. So I should have lightning so, there. Yeah, of course. Then so, I would just wait. Maybe, yeah, okay, I think he plays the Musketeers. Yeah, Mega Minion is good. And now um, sit, have wait. lightning. Yep, I have lightning ready for three Musketeers. Okay. Uh, okay, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, this is weird. Yeah, so Minion is good. Okay. I think he, he will play his... Okay, you didn't need the Tombstone, I think. Okay. Oh, but that's a good lightning. Cool. So, so you think the I tombstone think, was a waste there? Yeah, I think that was an overcommitment because it's not that bad to take a bit of damage. And okay. now he's, you're not leading on Elixir and he will pump again and that's already a bit bad. So what should I do here? Should I Lava Hound push again? Yeah, you don't have... Yeah, I would Lava Hound push again because you, uh, you don't know if he has a minion horde. Otherwise you could go in with a loon, but if he has okay. a minion horde then it's... Well, I have over. arrows also in hand. Yeah, but if you go with a naked loon and then they play minion heart, you um, you can yep. arrow the minion heart, but the loon will be dead already. All right, I'm gonna send in the balloon this time. Okay. And unfortunately, I don't think I can cycle fast enough to, okay, to lightning. Then. So this is fine. I'm just gonna yeah. hold and do nothing. <laughs> yeah, you have to pre, you have to be uh, very careful with the counter push right now. So. So. I'm gonna lightning here, is that cool? Yeah, yeah, you have to do that. Yep. Alright, so far oh, so good. Oh. I would set up with a tombstone right now, cause if you go, and then, yeah, I would play a tombstone first. Okay. Why would and, you, why would we make that uh, decision yeah, there? Sorry. Cause, cause you want um, the three musketeers to cross the river, or uh, you don't want the, the lava to be in his, in his, in his side, or half. Yeah. Okay, this is tricky. <laughs> I'm gonna play a balloon on top of them and try to get damage. Uh splash okay. damage. Death damage. I wouldn't have done I wouldn't have done that. I would have <laughs> played minions. Okay. And I, I would have played minions to kill them. Yeah, but it's fine. Okay. So you never yeah, use pretty... you never use a balloon defensively like that? Only if I um if they play minion horde and I don't have any and anything else, but he was he was I don't know what he did there, but now you can arrow out his tower. That was pretty stupid by him. So I'm just cycling defense here, and I'll, I'll arrow here. Probably didn't need that tombstone, but it ended up working out fine. Uh, yeah. I really like this, man. I like when you coach <laughs> when you coach as I play. It's pretty nice. Yeah, so basically that was pretty good. Uh -huh. um, you you let the two musketeers cross the river and you tank with the lava hound, but I wouldn't have played the loon. Okay, so using the loon defensively probably just not a good idea in most situations. Yeah, maybe against minion horde if you don't have anything else. But even okay. then, you have to be careful because um, since the lava loon has that uh, three second bomb, yeah, it doesn't work out every time. Okay. All right, let's go into the golem deck, man. Yeah. Okay. I just. Um, let me take one second. Yeah, go ahead and hop into a grand challenge. Are you in the middle of a grand challenge by any chance? Um, no, I don't have a challenge at the moment. Okay, so unfortunately it's going to be the beginning of a grand challenge, guys. I mean, Octa is already maxed, so there's really no reason for him to be playing in one. Uh, yeah. Do you have well, all max the... legendaries on that account? Um, no, the Night Witch and the Bandit are next on that account because at the moment I only play Lava Luna on ladder, so I don't okay. need that. Okay, all right. Well, we'll do our best. Let's see what kind of matchups we get because I do want to take a look at this deck. I think it's an interesting one and probably the strongest Golem deck right now. So let me know when you're into a uh, match. Yeah, I just... I didn't have the deck at the moment, so... I'm... Oh, you're building it? Okay, cool. So you're from Germany, correct? Yeah, exactly. And did you watch CCGS at all? Um, yeah, I watched it, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to play myself because I'm not old enough. I can't believe you're not old enough. You sound like you're like in your 20s or 30s or something. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you? Uh, do were you rooting on uh, Baron, your countryman? Yeah, I found uh, I, I liked him, but I didn't have like a, a favorite. Uh, yeah, I wasn't rooting anymore. 
Yeah, I hope to have Baron on the channel soon. Okay, so here we are with the Golem deck. Tell us a little bit about this deck. What are you trying to do with it? Yeah, it's just like in every other Golem deck, you want to build up <laughs> pumps uh, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and if then you, you, you can go. This, is, this yeah. might be a tough question, but if you had to say there's like one or two golden rules for playing Golem Beatdown or Beatdown, what would you say they are? Like, what's the most important keys uh, oh, that people okay. need to understand? Oh my god. <laughs> there was a there was a pretty bad tombstone. Uh, you think? You Wait. think? <laughs> it's just like in in, in in any other beatdown deck, it's not like you can't take some damage. You don't have to defend every single hit point. Mm -hmm. And some it's just like better to build up a, hu a huge elixir lead than um, like you can can get three hundred damage and then pump. That's better than um, defending this the damage. Okay. So taking using your towers as a resource, taking damage, yeah, exactly. knowing when to take damage and when not. How much are you comfortable with a golem deck losing a tower in in the first two minutes? Obviously, you'd rather not, but is that okay for you? Yeah, that I think that depends on the matchup. Okay. So, for example, um, against some hog cycle deck with execution, it's pretty hard to come back, but most often you can recover from that. Okay. So he's doing a good job of pressuring the opposite lane because as a hog cycle player, he has to he has to get a good lead on you going into double elixir because that's when you're really going to shine. And it looks like he did a good job getting pressure, but maybe he overcommitted yeah. a little bit there. Yeah, I, I also think that was too much elixir. No, mm -hmm. he had no chance of defending that. No, you actually might, might be able to go in for three here. Your golem is still over half health. Uh, nah. I think uh, I'd rather pump up because... Mm -hmm. He has to uh, defend that, and yeah, so I can build up an elixir lead. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, when you have one tower down as a golem player, are you generally trying to go for what? What makes you decide whether to go for the three count or whether to go for the second tower? Um, I don't have like a rule for that. Okay, I, I just decide spontaneously. But most often, most often, I go for the second tower. The second tower. Okay. Yeah. Do will this goes for Lava Hound and it goes for Golem. But when, if ever, are you playing the Golem or the Lava Hound in the pocket, like on the other side of the arena after you have one tower down? Um, especially with Lava Hound, you can do that um, if you have some defensive troops um, coming up. Um, then you can play the Lava Hound in the pocket because you just have to tank for them. And yeah, it's okay. pretty much the same thing with Golem as well. Okay. So yeah. Troops on the defense, and you can tank them. Then it's a good idea. That's not a pretty. Always, but yeah. mm -hmm. it's not always a good idea. Then only if you have an elixir lead, but then you can do that. Okay, that's a pretty good rule, and that was a pretty good win there. Actually, he wasn't a bad player, uh, aside from that mistaken tombstone. <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I that was just a misclick, I think. Yes, I think so too. Okay, let's go ahead and play one more if you're okay with that. Yeah, of course. If you're okay. T-A-Y with that. <laughs> okay, so I have pump again, which is pretty good. Okay. Are you... Are you uh, no matter what deck you're playing, uh, Botchim, are you starting out with pump ever? Or what are your rules for, for putting the pump down? Are you waiting for your opponent to make the first move? No, I think starting out with the pump is is a good idea pretty much every time. Um, yeah, in the... In the near past, there are many people playing um, bridge spam, so it got a bit bit more risky. But still, I think starting out with a pump is is good most often. Okay. If somebody, if you started out with a pump and they hit you with everything they have, they unload ten elixir bridge spam at you. What is your best defensive sequence with this deck to try to to try to mitigate the damage? Obviously, you're going to take a lot of damage, but yeah, against bridge spam, it's just pretty hard um, if they if they go in and well and if they are a good player most often you will yeah get a lot of damage but mm -hmm. yeah so i'm not pretty sure so just do your best <laughs> yeah yeah okay and also um that which which push isn't always the same push mm -hmm. yeah it's not my subscribers keep friendly battle requesting me and ruining our live matches <laughs> Every season, I let my subscribers uh, friend request me, uh, Botchum, so that they can play with me in 2v2 and, and stuff like that. Uh, the only bad thing about that is that they, uh, 
<laughs> the request nice while I'm recording. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, although he has an Inferno, this looks pretty good. He, he overcommitted and when I dropped the Golem. And, yeah. Nice. So, how are you dealing with Inferno Tower uh, in this deck? If they obviously this guy has Inferno, what is your uh, go to strategy? Yeah, obviously, you have the Lightning to uh, get, uh, get past Inferno. And the most important thing also with Lava Loon is you have to wait a bit. So, don't Lightning the, the Inferno um, just when they drop it, let it load up a bit. And then, just before it gets like the last punch and uh, gets the, the, the important damage off, then you're Lightning it. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes if you lightning a little bit too early, you'll your golem will still die. You know. Uh, so here yeah, we go, yeah. right here. Okay. That was, that was a perfect example. Was yeah, perfect. So now he still has half health, and uh, that was awesome. Okay. So you kind of just showed it right there, but I, this might be a stupid question, but the order of support troops that you drop behind your golem, right? So. The Night Witch, the Baby Dragon, the Mega Minion, whatever you're going to drop. Is there any rhyme or reason to what troop you're picking? Uh, especially if you don't know, you know, obviously if they have a skeleton army or something like that, good game by the way, if they have yeah. a skeleton army or something like that, obviously you're going to be dropping the, the Baby Dragon. But what if they just have, you know, a, a Musketeer Inferno Tower or something like that? Like, do you have a preference for the order that you're going to drop uh, troops, support troops behind the Golem? Um, so for that scenario with Musketeer and Inferno Tower, I would be very passive because you need the lightning. Um, yeah, it's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know what you face, I would go with Night Witch because it's just very OP at the moment. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's good against many things. And yeah, if they have spam troops, then Baby Dragon is, is the be best choice. But sometimes, for example, if they have Minion Horde, mm -hmm. then if you drop the Baby Dragon behind the Golem and nothing else, then they can just wait for the baby dragon to target something, or maybe they don't even have to wait because only a baby dragon doesn't kill a minion horde in one on one. Yeah. So you have to be careful with that. Most often, if you then then you have to go in with like um, mega minion and baby dragon. What do you think of that uh, that golem three musketeer deck? Do you think it's too expensive for you? So actually, it's number one in the world at the moment. Um, oh, is it? I didn't, I didn't really even notice that. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. I didn't really try it out myself because, yeah, so when I tried it out, I didn't have a lot of success, but it's pretty strong. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the, the deck that he's showing, at least, is the P.E.K.K.A. 3 Musketeer deck, but who knows? He probably played the Golem one to get there? Yeah, he played the Golem one. I faced okay. him earlier. Okay. Yeah, so very interesting. I, I really enjoyed your insight into uh, into these beatdown decks. I feel like I have a, li a little bit more of, uh, well, more tools in my arsenal and more tools in my toolbox to, uh, to better handle. So I'm going to give Golem a try. It's my only max epic card, so I'm excited to, uh, okay. to use your tips and see what happens. Uh, the last question I have for you before shoutouts and stuff like that are, do you have a substitution for Night Witch in that deck? Um... Actually, um, I used to play that deck uh, with Lumberjack in CR Worlds when Nightwitch wasn't even in the game. So yeah, I would, I would uh, put in a Lumberjack. Okay, how about if you don't have Lumberjack? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I faced uh, earlier. I faced um, a guy with Mini Packer, and he was also like top fifty. So I imagine that should be a pretty, pretty good substitution nice. as well. Yeah, and Mini Packer is good against Bridge Spam too. So that's 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 a win-win. Yeah. <laughs> I was pretty surprised because I yeah. didn't face many pickers at all. And yeah. yeah, you're like, what's that troop? Is it a new troop? Uh, uh, also, speaking of new troops, out of the four new troops, what are you most excited about? Oh, actually, I didn't take a, a, a real look at them. Oh, I, I mean, like, okay. Well, briefly, <laughs> yeah. I there's there's the Mega Knight. He's a legendary with a lot of HP. Oh, yeah, and, I remember that. Yep. There's a Flying Machine. Uh, it's for elixir, but it's like a flying dark goblin kind of, but it can be killed by mm -hmm. fireball. There's the uh, skeleton uh, barrel, which kind of fly you might be interested in skeleton barrel. It goes behind. Uh, you can use it in like a lava loon deck, and yeah. it floats around. And then when it when it's killed, it spawns like nine skeletons or something. So it might be interesting. Uh, I don't know how that how that would play out. I, I can't yeah. really. It's one of those things you have to just try, I think. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, and then Cannon Cart, which is like a cannon, an epic card that costs five, that when it's killed, it gets turned into a cannon. Yeah. So a- any of those interest I'm, you at all? Yeah, I'm pretty interested in the Mega Knight because everyone says it will be like crazy OP, and I'm not sure about that. For uh, especially for me, because I play Lava Loon. Yeah. Um, for, from my perspective, I don't see that card being OP because like you can drop air, air troops on it and. There will be nothing they can do. And that's just true. like a Pekka, maybe like a Pekka that deals splash damage, but you can also deal with Pekka. Yeah. No, I, I think that it could go either way. I'm not ready to say that it's going to be the most OP card either, honestly. But uh, well, I guess time will tell, man. Uh, I've, you've been very generous with your time. I know it's getting late there over in Germany. Do you have any uh, shout outs, anything like that, before we uh, let you go? Oh, I, I actually didn't prepare that, but. Oh, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Is there anybody you want to thank or say hi to, or are you, are you okay? No, maybe a shout out to my CR Worlds team because excellent. I think we did. I, I think we did pretty well. Um, yeah, the German team last season, and I'm already hyped for the next season because yeah, I don't play a, a lot of competitive. Because I, um, first of all, I don't have a lot of time, and then, yeah, it, it's just too much. But CR Worlds, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, uh, best of luck to, to you and the German team in, in Season 2. I'll be keeping an eye on you for sure. And certainly best of luck on Ladder as well. Keep up the good work, man. Yeah, thanks. No problem. So, guys, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. I want to give a huge shout-out to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. You can find his information in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me. And as always, take care, guys.